In today's class, we are going to discuss about uh, <coughs> sparse matrix. Sparse matrix. In yesterday's class, we all these topics are discussed. Now we discuss about the sparse matrix. And what is meant by a sparse matrix and how it can be represented uh, that we discuss. Actually, we, we all know that matrix can be represented in a two-dimensional format. So, we can say that a matrix is nothing but a collection of data which is arranged in a two-dimensional format. That is nothing but rows and columns format. Then what is a sparse matrix? So, the matrix which is having more number of zero elements more number of zeros in a given matrix, then that matrix is called as a sparse matrix. That means suppose if you are having a three by three matrix, so in three by three matrix, a total of nine elements we can hold. But out of those nine elements, if five elements are more than half of the elements are only zeros, remaining are non-zero elements, then we can call it as a sparse matrix. So what is the speciality of the sparse matrix? So if we, use this first matrix concept to represent a matrix which is having more number of zeros. Then there are two advantages are there. One is what we can call it as a advantage in a form of a storage, advantage in a form of a computing time. That means in space matrix case, we store only non-zero elements. That means zeros are very less used variables in a given matrix. That's why we store only non-zero elements so that uh, less memory will be occupied. And next one is a computing time. That means logically the computing time is saved designing a data structure traversing only non-zero elements. That means we use only non-zero elements to perform the computations. So computing time also reduced. reduced. For example, here you can see that an example case here, you can see that this is the matrix, which is a, a four by four, five by five matrix. In this four, five by five matrix, we can observe that here we are having more number of zeros and a less number of non-zero elements. So the maximum of in a five by five matrix, you know, uh, total of out of 25 elements, we are having only six non-zero elements, remaining are zero elements. So representing a sparse matrix in a 2D array leads to wastage of lots of memories as zeros in the matrix are no use in most of the cases. So instead of storing the zeros with non-zero elements, we can store only non-zero elements. That means so that we can reduce the storage. So these non-zero elements, these non-zero elements will, uh, these non-zero elements will be stored in a form of a triplets will be stored in a form of a triplet. So the triplet consists of three values. One is a row, another one is a column, another one is a value, another one is a value. So in sparse matrix, all the entries will be stored in a form of a triplet. The triples consists of three values, row, column, and value, row, column, and value. So this space matrix can be represented in two different ways. One is by using the arrays. Another one is by using the linker list. Now let's have a glance on how we can use the arrays to represent the space matrix. As I told you just now, it is represented in a form of a uh, triples like row, column, and value. So here you can see that this is the given matrix. This is the given matrix. And um, this can be represented in a form of a space matrix. This can be represented in a form of a sparse matrix. And here a row is represent the index of the row where non-zero element is located. And column is nothing but the index of the column where non-zero element is located. And the value is nothing, value corresponding value in it. So here you can see row, column, value. So let us assume that this is the zeroth row and this is first row and this is second row and this is third row. And let us assume that here also this is zeroth column and then first column, second column, third column and fourth column. So now you can see that zeroth row and in second column we are having the value 3. So zeroth row and then second column we are having the value 3. The 3 will be stored here. The 3 will be stored here. Likewise in second case, you know, zeroth row and then fourth column, we are having the value four. 
we are having the value 4. Zeroth row, fourth column, we are having the value 4. Likewise, first row, second column, we are having the value 5. Now tell me, what is the value we are having first row in third column? First row in third column, what is the value we are having? Somebody respond. What is the value we are having in first row and the third column? Hello? Hello? Am I audible? Asghar Ali? Lavanya? Asghar Ali, Lavanya? What happened to all? Mogulian? Sound, sir. Sound? What sound? Mogulian? Yes, sir. What is the value stored in first row and third column? Seven, sir. Seven, very good. And then in case of third row and first column? Third row and first column? This is 0, 1, 2, 3. Third row and first column, we are having the value 2. And then uh, third row and second column, we are having the value 6. So this is how we can represent the uh, sparse matrix. We can represent the sparse matrix. Now, the, this sparse matrix can be represented in a form of a linked list. So, linked list consists of uh, nodes and each node is having four fields. Each node is having four fields. That is a, a row value, column and then value and then a pointer which points to the next node. That means the next node is nothing but it contains the address of the next node it contains the address or we can say that a pointer which points to the next node moglian am i audible am i audible make a permal my voice is audible yes sir yes sir okay okay, okay. and then here as i told you a space matrix can be represented in a form of a linked list so the linked list consists of a nodes and here you can see that we are having a total of uh, six nodes and each node is having four parts out of those four parts the first part represent the row and second part represent the column and third part represent the corresponding value in that row and column and then fourth part represent the address which points to the next node which points to the next node so this is how we can represent the spares matrix uh, using the linked list using the linked list. And then next thing what we are having in our syllabus is a set interface. So sets uh, interface, the working style of the sets interface is, uh, you know, this uh, similar to the sets what we are having in our mathematics, what we are having in our mathematics. So set is nothing but a collection of elements with uh, without duplicate values, without duplicate values. And uh, in Java, we are having some inbuilt uh, interfaces, inbuilt interfaces, or we can say that, uh, uh, you know, uh, general, we can say that uh, uh, general uh, implementations, like uh, ready-made implementations in Java, are the, uh, that means to implement the sets in Java, ready-made implementations are there. So we can use those implementations to work with the set. Set is nothing but collection of elements without duplicates collection of elements without duplicates so the set contains only methods uh, inherited from uh, collection inherited from a uh, main class collection so in java we are having three different types of sets one is a hash set another one is a tree set another one is a linked hash set another one is linked hash set so hash set in hash set the elements are stored in a hash table. The meaning of that one is there is no guarantee that the elements will be stored in order, in sequence. So every hash set is having some hash code based on the hash code. The newly, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> the newly entered value will be stored. 
Whereas in a tree set, the data will be stored in a form of a red block tree. Order of its elements, uh, the, in what way those elements will be stored depending upon the value what you are storing in that red block tree. And substantially, another one what we are having is a linked hash set. It is a combination of a linker list and hash set or we can say that a hash set which is implemented using the linker list. So if you are using out of these three, you know, hash set is somewhat faster and uh, uh, tree set is uh, somewhat slower than the hash set. Whereas the linked hash set is having its own advantages that we will discuss in uh, uh, later, uh, discuss in later. So if you see the hash set class, which is a predefined class in Java, it can it, rep, it is having a set of elements that is what we can call it as a objects. It does not give any guarantee that the elements will be stored in an order and uh, it doesn't allow any duplicate elements. It doesn't allow any duplicate elements. So we can write the hash set class as class hash set. Here you can see class hash set t and then uh, this is the syntax and we can create the objects as hash set string and the object and a new hash set string. The following constructors are available in a hash set that is a hash set and hash set into capacity. The capacity represent how many elements that can be stored in a hash set initially and of course the capacity may increase automatically like as you store more number of elements in that hash table then the capacity will increment it automatically. Along with these constructors Hash set class is also having some methods that is the add method to add the objects to the hash class and remove method to remove the elements from the hash table and clear to remove all elements from the hash set and contains to check whether a hash set is having a specified element or not. That means it returns either true or false and another method is empty. It returns true if the hash set contains that elements and another method is size that returns number of elements present in the hash set. All these methods are predefined methods. Once you use the uh, hash set class, we can directly use these methods. For example, if you see, if you see the example, here you can see public static void main, here I'm creating the hash set HS and uh, the string, uh, the, it represents that the contain the data which can hold in the hash table is of type string, is of type string type. So here I'm by using the add method, by using the add method, predefined add method, here I'm adding uh, some strings to the hash table, which is uh, like the India, America, Japan, China, and America like that we add here. And here, you know, and when you are uh, to display the values of a uh, hash set table, and uh, directly we can write system.out.println and hash set is equal to plus hs. And directly it will view the list of elements that is India, America, Japan, China, and America. Just now I told you that most of the cases, um, uh, this is how that hash table works. This is how this hash table works. Likewise, we can use hs.size that gives a number which represents the number of elements in the hash table. And we can use hs.isempt. That time it returns either true or false. If the list is empty, it gives uh, true or else it gives false. And uh, we can also check hs that contains some uh, like India here. If you are using the object name as then it checks whether India is present in the uh, hash set or not. And then likewise, we can use the clear to remove all the hs dot clear method to remove all the elements from the hash table. And then like uh, to remove a specific uh, Object we can use hs dot remove obj obj in the sense again here we need to mention the object any name of these countries given countries then it will remove that particular one. So if you see uh, this is how that hash set works. So if you are going to uh, discuss about uh, linker list hash set, let me explain uh, what are the different types of linker lists available and how they are uh, created and how they can be used. Actually, linker list is a linear data structure which contains, which, which contains a set of nodes. And each node is having uh, two parts. Each node contains uh, uh, two parts in that one. One part is used to represent the data. Another part is used uh, to hold the address which points to the next node, which points to the next node. 
So the second part, what we can call it as a link part. The first part is having the data. That's why the data part, what we can call it as an information part. So in single linker list case, each node is having two parts. One is that information part, another one is the link part. The link is having the address of the next node. Address of the next node. So there are various types of linker list are there, like single linker list, double linker list, circular linker list, like that. In single linker list, you can see that each node is having two parts. One is the information part, another one is the link part. The information part is used to store the data, whereas the link part is used to store the address of the successor node, address of the successor node. So example here, you can see that uh, here we are having a linker list with the four nodes, linker list with four nodes. First node is having the data part as a 10. Second node data is, uh, part, uh, is uh, um, having the value 20 and third node is having value 30 and fourth node is having value 40. And after fourth node, there is uh, no uh, any other node. So that's why the link part of the fourth node is represented with a null and remaining all links are having the addresses of the successor node. That means that 10, the first node next, this particular, uh, the first node next part is having the address of this particular node. And second node next part or link part is having the address of the third node. And third node link part is having the address of the fourth node. Like that we can, uh, having the uh, nodes in linker list uh, and uh, each node is connected with the another, uh, each node is logically connected with the another node. So that's why here what we can call it as a, this is a single linker list. But when it comes to the double linker list, each node of the double linker list is divided into three parts, is divided, divided into three parts. So one part, we can say that uh, in for, one part is used to store the information and remaining two parts we are using to Oh, store the addresses or we can say that the links of a uh, successor node as well as the predecessor node. Uh, successor node as well as the predecessor node. So here you can see that uh, the three nodes, uh, that means the parts of a node if you are observing in double link list. So it consists of a left, info, right. Left node contains the address of the uh, predecessor node whereas the right node contains the address of the successor node, address of the successor node. Left node contains the address of the predecessor node and right node contains the address of the successor node and info and info uh, and here that info is uh, contains the data uh, actual data part or we can say that the information or we can say that the information. So we can say the information. So this is how a double linker list is represented. Here we are having the four data values 10, 20, 30, 40 and out of this, this part contains, you know, there is no any uh, predecessor node for the first node. So here uh, the, that part of the link part of that or left part of 10 is uh, filled with null and the right part is filled with the address of the next node. But when it comes to the second node, it is having two nodes. One is a, a node uh, uh, with value 10 is as a predecessor and a node with value 30 as a successor. So it contains uh, here, the left part contains the address of the first node and right part contains the address of a uh, uh, next node, address of the next node. This is how actually double linker list is created and the advantage of this double linker list is uh, we can freely move in any direction like we can move the linker list, we can uh, traverse the linker list either from left to right or from right to left or from right to left easily. And uh, the third type of linker list what we are having is a circular linker list. So here in circular linker list uh, there is a, it is a slight modification of a linear linker list what we discussed in previous part. So here in circular linker list, what we are having is the last uh, link part, last node link part is connect is having the address of the first node. So here you can observe the last node link part in case of single linker list, it contains the null, whereas 
in case of circular linker list it contains the address of the first node address of the first node as a result of this one we are having a, uh, that is the reason why we can call it as a circular linker list that is uh, but uh, here there is some disadvantage is there in uh, using the circular linker list if you are not taking a proper care in processing it is possible to get into an infinite loop so when processing chase it up to proper ga ganaka manam chayaka pote proper ga ante care ganaka fisko pote there is a chance that we may enter into an infinite loop so in processing a circular link list it is important that we are able to identify that end of the list we should able to understand we should able to identify the end of the list end of the list so if you are not identifying the end of the list meaning of that one is you will be in infinite loop you will enter into an infinite loop you will enter into an infinite loop so now this is how this uh, circular link list works so likewise uh, in all the circular link list of course boys uh, we can uh, implement a, a circular double link list also circular double link list also and in the uh, in all these three types of link list uh, uh there are some common uh addts we can we can define a common add abstract data type the the addt that add contains uh, you know various types of uh, uh, methods uh, that is what we can call it as a create is empty count index delete and traverse here the create is used to create the initial uh, single linked list and is empty is used to return uh, to check uh, whether the linker list is having uh, is empty or not and count is used to check how many elements are there uh, in your linker list how many nodes are there in a linker list and the node index comma x method is used to insert an value x or object x at the given index and the delete index is used to delete a, a particular node from a given index and uh, of a given index and then traverse is used to list all the elements from left to right in case of single link list so the linear list add is translated into java interface as follows like uh, interface followed by linear list and it contains of these methods to implement the above said linear list operation just following uh, just uh, have some assumptions like the single link list implementation of a linear list require a class node which contains two, two data members one is the info another one is a link field the info field may contain any data type of object the link is a reference to the next node and then let size be an integer type identifier which represents the number of elements in the list so in the given lo the size is nothing but let us assume that it is an integer type so at any time size gives uh, the number of elements present in the link list the number of uh, and uh, for each insertion the size will be increased on each uh, uh, deletion the variable value of size will be decremented by 1 decremented by 1 so now let's have a glance on how uh, i think you have a pictorial representation of a, how a linked list will be how a linked list will be that means a linked list contains a, a set of nodes a collection of nodes interconnected with each other uh, interconnected with each other and how this linked list can be uh, implemented in a programming way that uh, uh, we will see now so first of all what we have we need to create a node which consists of two parts one is a information part which is a uh, type of object that means in the information part we can store any type of data and the next one is a link which contains a node type again which contains a node type so what is this link and which contains the node part meaning of this one is no the link is holding the address of similar type of node address of similar type of node you know the node is a class type here that means we are creating the object of node the address part of that node is points to the another object of same class type so that's why here uh, uh, we are using the, the node link so this is actually what we can call it as a self referential uh, structures self referential structure that means it points to the similar type of nodes so then afterwards this is a class what we are creating and then we are creating a class sll 
here sll stands for single linker list and implements linear list implements linear list means what linear list is the interface which here which is defined here which is defined here interface linear list and then here i am using node type of temp node head p q so node type of temp temp is also having two parts one is data part and another one is the link part as these five variables i am declaring as a node type each variable is having two parts one is a data information part another one is what we can call is as a link part and then let us take here int size and i am having some methods uh, definitions of the methods for create and is empty count and then insert and then what we are having is a delete delete and then uh, traverse and then traverse so now write the uh, uh, let's go for the actual uh, what we can call it as a uh, main class which contains the main method so here uh, uh, sls ll demo public start this is the class name public static void main like string args and sll i'm creating an object sll ob is equal to new sll so object of this class object of this class sll class object of this class sll class and then ob dot create that means i'm calling the method create so i go here create means uh, control will be transferred to this particular method so here a head will be created with null and then size zero so system uh, dot out dot print ln this is created successfully that means a node named with head is created with initial value of null that means with initial value of uh, null with initial value of null that means it can hold some address of node type it can hold some address of node type then afterwards uh, uh, system dot out dot print ln number of elements in the list is ob dot count presently we are not at all inserting any value in the linker list so ob dot count gives you the value zero initially size value is zero so if you see control is transferred to this count method so this count method it returns size the size value initially what we are given is zero so output we we get the output as zero we get the output as zero then afterwards system dot out dot print ln list is empty yes no doubt list is empty initially it is it gives the value here uh, list is empty means true it gives the value true list is uh, empty now i am inserting the value 10 so let us assume that here let us assume that here uh, for your um, uh, okay then next ob dot insert 0 comma 10 the meaning of that one is um, i want to insert a first node as 10 and second node as 20 and third node as 30 and whenever you are call you are using this what happened means that the insert method will be executed insert method will be executed insert method will be executed and it checks whether you given index is out of bound or not so if it is not out of bound a new node will be created and uh, in in that new node node information will be data what you are given here the data part what you are given is 10 and uh, data part what you are given is 10 so uh, that will be stored and index is zero as it indicates that it is a first node so node link is equal to head the node link part contains the head part and head is equal to node that means simply it creates a, it creates a node like this it creates a node like this that means uh, insert your ob dot insert ob dot insert 0 comma 10 will create a node will create a node let us assume that will create a uh, node of this type will create a node of this type and uh, here it contains a 10 and it contains null it contains null okay so uh, this is how a node is created and here uh, like this in next case what happened means another node is created let us assume that 
the address of this one is uh, 100 address of this one is 100 and then next node will be let us assume that when you are giving controls when you are giving Uh, address of this one is 200 address of this one is uh, 300 here uh, the second value will be stored like 20 here and then 30 here 30 and address of this one is 100 address of this one is 200 now so here it contains uh, uh, 200 200 here it contains uh, 300 that means what happened means this is the first node and uh, this first node next part contains address of this node that means this one and the second node next part contains address of this one that means the this node and as this is a last node it contains the null as it is a last node it contains the null so this is how actually linker list uh, uh, insertion process can be takes place and now system dot out dot print ln number of elements in the list is ob dot count now as you are inserting the three elements the count value gives you as a three and then system dot out dot print ln list is empty now your is empty method returns false as it is having already three elements and now you are saying that you delete an element from the second location that means uh, out of uh, you, 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 uh, that means what happened means currently your linker list is having the value 10 and then uh, it points to you know 20 and then it points to 30 now you are asking now you are asking for deleting the element 2 so the second element will be deleted second element will be deleted now your linker list is having two values 10 and 20 and then next you are asking for traverse so output what we are getting for this traverse is 10 and 30 after that again you are uh, 10 and 30 here you are giving so the output what you are getting sorry sorry you are you are asking for deleting the second location now second location the value what we are having is 30 so the uh, value what we contains uh, remaining is only 10 and 20 only 10 and 20 so this is what we are getting as the output but this is what we are getting as output. okay so this is how that uh, single link list implementation can be takes place so likewise we can use the circular linker list also so here uh, this particular diagram gives you a clear representation of uh, how a circular linker list will you works let us assume that here we are having a three nodes three nodes we are having three nodes and it is a circular double linker list you just remember the circular double linker list and here it is a circular double linker list so it contains of uh, three parts and this is the address of the left node and this is the address of the right node and this is a uh, data part this is a data part when it comes to the uh, if you consider the uh, circular uh, single linker list that time we don't have this uh, we don't have uh, give me some no, two minutes time i will show you how a circular single list will appear
So here, uh, now you can see an image. You can see an image how a circular link list will be appear. So let us assume that here, this is the first node and this is the second node and this is the third node and this is the fourth node. And here, you know, the address of the first node is uh, 4,800. Let us assume that address of the second node is uh, 4,850. Address of the third node is 4,877. Address of the fourth node is 4,500. Now here, the data part, you know, uh, 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 single link list is having, each node of a single list is having two parts. One is the information part, another one is the address part. So information part is having the value 10 and uh, uh, link part is having the address of this node. Address of this node is 4850. Likewise, second node is having the data path and address of the next node. What is the address of the next node here? 4877. And then third node is having the data path and it contains the address of the next node. Next node address is 4500. Fourth node is having the data path as a 40 and address of the first node. So what is this one? First node, address of the first node. This is how actually circular linked list works. Circular linked list works. So now uh, I hope you, you understand what I said. And then next thing is uh, So, um, uh, uh, this is the similar one, like how a circular link list will be works, like it is having an interface part and a class part and uh, only thing here is uh, while inserting the element, uh, this, no, this is the main part, like the last node and next will be connected to the first node, the last node next will be connected to the first node. Remaining everything will be same as in the link list. Okay. So this is how a double link list will be created. Like double link list is having, you know, uh, what we can call it as a two parts, left part and right part. And how this double link list can be implemented and how it works that we will discuss in next class. Okay. Thank you. If you have any doubts, you can ask me. If you have any doubts, you can ask me now. Sir. Mega Parmal, Moglian, Azur Ali. If you have any doubts, ask me. Dinesh Reddy, any doubts? I will share this material with you. Don't worry. Any doubts? No, sir. No doubts. Okay, then. Thank you. We will meet in next class. Okay? okay.